Welcome back guys to another episode of Sin City Outdoors. Uh, today we're still out here in California. We're out on the coast actually. So there's a big cement ship out here at like the cliffside beach or something. I don't remember the exact name of this beach. We'll put it right here. But there's a big cement ship that actually got destroyed because of this recent storms. So back in the day this ship had a big pier that went out to it and they had repurposed it. It was a World War I cement ship made to be an oil tanker and uh, it got repurposed they didn't see any combat in world war one so after world war one was over they parked it out here on this beach and turned it into an attraction so it was actually super nice at one point that pier went out they had a restaurant in there they had like a little amusement park and they had all kinds of different stuff activities to do on it but it's a big part of the history out here in this local area and it's crazy because these big storms that have been blowing through California completely destroyed this thing. So we're gonna go take a look at it. I got my cousin here with me, Roman. Yo, what's up? You guys might recognize him from that bull elk video, Juju's yep. bull elk hunt. So we're gonna go check out this ship really quick, look at it. And uh, one reason we're out here is because you live out here where, where it's been flooding a lot, out here on the coast of California. Did it rain a lot on your house? It didn't rain a lot, but they still took out our school time. We didn't have school Thursday or Friday because of uh, the lack of staff. The staff lived in places that were flooded, so they couldn't come to work, and they stopped their school. So you got lucky, huh? Yep. <laughs> no school. Got a longer uh, extended winter break. All right, let's go check out this, this ship. Beautiful beach behind me. It's kind of storming a little bit because that storm's blowing through, but it's a pretty cool deal. The storm was so bad, it actually broke the whole pier and kind of broke that ship up into three different pieces. So you can hear it behind me. What's your first thought looking at it? My first thought? Yep. It's that big brown thing. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Another big rocker, but no, it's, yeah. it's a ship. Just like four days ago, it was a whole ship and it got broken up because of the storm. And then that broke the pier? Yeah. You can see all the wood down there from the pier and everything. But that pier, used to go all the way out and connect to that ship. What is your first thought looking at it, Drew? It's pretty crazy. I mean, I've never seen a... I always thought they say piers are like indestructible and junk, but I guess not. You're going to be all scared next time you go out on a fishing pier. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. That whole ship right there got repurposed and it was being used as like a restaurant, an area to go party on kind of deal. According to the news, the storms hit it so heavily that it actually broke up that ship into a bunch of pieces and completely ripped up that pier that's been built for over a hundred years. So this part, like this area kind of lost like a part of its history in a way with the breaking of that pier. That was real interesting, but we're going to go ahead and check out some of the cities. This area, if you watch the news, a lot of the footage that they got of the California flooding was from Santa Cruz area so we're gonna go run around this city and see what we can get into. So another stop here in Felton this is actually Felton Park in, in Central California as you can see right here the water level was all the way up here at one point a few days ago and just massive storms are coming through again so it's expected to raise. So this river is nowhere near this most of the time and as you can see over there back behind there there's a bridge and that bridge normally doesn't have water that high and uh it got so high it was hitting the top of that bridge so we were hearing that in felton people were getting evacuated so this is the spot the river just came out flooded this part let's just go take a closer look Jeez, you can see how high the water was and it's 40 feet above where it should be too we were being told earlier that water is flowing very fast The werewolf. <laughs> the water's moving fast. If you were to fall in there, there ain't no swimming out of that. Do you think if you fell in, you'd be able to swim? Of course. Nah, yeah, I'd probably drown if I were not. What about you? I think I'd survive. I think it'd be more of the fact that like, I would just try getting towards the edge and it won't be that deep near the edge. I'll try to stick my yeah. feet, plant my feet in or something. Grab one of those trees or something. Yeah. This is an interesting bridge that they built over it though. Look how tall it is. I don't know what they built it for like that, but. Looks like they were planning on getting horseback and wagons through here or something. How old this is. I don't know, it looks old though. But that thing was wobbly, that, that was a sketchy bridge. So we just walked on a bridge built in 1892. And believed to be the tallest covered bridge in the county. Wow. 
Oldest bridge in California at one point. Tallest. <laughs> this is the tallest roofed bridge in California oh, at one point. You do the use tallest the roof downtown. bridge at uh, California won't pay if I'm correct in 19. Uh, <laughs> I already got it wrong. 1892. 1892 to 93. Yeah. So this was the only bridge to be able to get into and out of Felton for like 40 years it said because this river was blocked and so back when it was all horses and they were using this bridge actively so that's probably why it's so tall she had been restored because in 1982 it says that uh it got destroyed by winter storms and the whole thing got blown apart i guess but <laughs> they <laughs> rebuilt it by 1987 so five years later by they said homegrown talent and materials around here they built it back and natural. 19 is <laughs> unnatural <laughs> Yeah, 19, hired, 1937 it was retired so now pedestrians can use it <laughs> okay, dang, they spit the whole history out so that's all them buildings right there you see that real flat flat fronted building that's like an old western style building right there that yeah. must have been the first shop of felton right here so we're out here looking around uh we just like being outside and we like seeing stuff like this a flood like this hasn't happened in how many years they say since 1860s since 1800 so we're not gonna see this again in our lifetime hopefully <laughs> if youtube sticks around and long after i'm dead somebody's gonna see this and say wow the river did come up so next time when it gets really high like this they can kind of gauge how high it came so you guys could watch this video and say you know what senior was right he's dead now but at one time he was right no <laughs> <laughs> well this fits me perfect <laughs> <laughs> so this whole neighborhood over here got flooded pretty badly when I look around you could see just mud just like that last place mud everywhere this guy's got mud all along the side of his house and his garage and everything some unfortunate stuff it looks right here like you could see how high the water was from that line right there so he didn't get flooded super badly this fence you could see that water line too man this whole area is just flooded look at all the oil all the color. Man, everybody's out here trying to clean up their houses. As we walk around here, you can see a lot of the locals are actually working right now to clean out their houses, their garages, flooded areas and stuff. Pretty wild. Man, that water went deep. Found your buddy, you. Oh, it's a worm. <laughs> it's a pretty big worm, look at that. There is mud everywhere out here. Look how deep this mud is. Jeez, yeah, this area over here got hammered. Yeah, that car got destroyed. Man, the farther we walked down this way, it looks like the higher the water was getting. That was insanely high. In this spot over here, the water was up to my neck. So it really, really flooded these people out pretty badly down this way. Ripped up this whole road. <laughs> this is pretty crazy, isn't it? I know, look at this right here, all this mud piled up right here back to the river. So that, that's the river over there. And it's just, it's crazy. It's very crazy. See how high the water was. <laughs> He's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if it flooded here before, because they got sirens up there. I wonder if those are like flood sirens or something. Because they do those for tornadoes, those tornado sirens and tsunami sirens. Is it scale one to a hundred? I'll give it like a seventy. 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 Come on. Nice. I don't want to. I don't want to deteriorate uh, Denny's fan base, but it was a solid fifteen. I don't <laughs> 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 you gotta tell the truth, because if you don't, people won't believe you on my Captain Cooks. Well, then yeah, if it is. It was a 15 for the kitchen cooks and some new grease sitting here. All right, so I appreciate your honesty. What was it, a 50%? 15. 50, oh my. 15%, <laughs> no way. I give it like a 20. 
20. Didn't 20? Finish it. Favorite food in the The chicken wings weren't on point this time, or what? What's going on here? They, they weren't popping. All right, well, we're going to get back at it, hit the road. It's beautiful out there. The, the rain kind of let up for a while. Uh, the waitress said that her house got flooded, right? A lot of people are going through some stuff right now. We're going to make sure she gets a pretty good tip. We're out here to help, like we were saying. And there it is. Help where you can. It's not a ton of money, and it's not life-changing, but whatever it can help with. I mean, if I was in a position where my whole house got flooded, I know that that's going to be a very expensive scenario. You know, 100 bucks, you know, even if it's an extra tank of gas, an extra meal, whatever, to relieve a little bit of stress, we're happy to do it. So this is a gesture of kindness, so... We're out here to help spread kindness. Roman's like, I need money. My house got wet. <laughs> yeah, but your easy. your house got wet on the outside. <laughs> his, his Jordans got wet. So uh, oh, man. What's up, you? Where you? We just got out of the restaurant and you're eating already. Come on. <laughs> he wasn't lying. <laughs> But yeah, we just got out of there. Um, Juju didn't like the wings that he got, which is all right. The, the woman was very nice. She said it was about a foot deep in her house. So just try to help out a little bit where we can. Like Adrian was saying earlier, we got some sales on sweaters and stuff. So hey, why not help out? We're very blessed. You know, I'm retired military and these guys making a little bit extra money working odd jobs and stuff. So. You know, it's good to help whenever we can. Okay, well, we just dropped off my cousin Roman back off at his house. We were actually going to stop at another spot here in California, but it turns out they were evacuating the city and we didn't want to get in the way. Um, a lot of these places that are flooded out, there's nobody in the cities right now, and uh, there's a lot of people working very hard to clean up, and we didn't want to get in their way, so we're actually going to throw in right now a goose hunt that we went on. We went out with some friends by an area where my family grew up in. Went on a nice little goose hunt. So it's gonna be a nice catch and cook. We're gonna throw that in really quick. Here we go. So as you can see here, got some hot butter simmering in my pan. When it gets hot enough, we've got a nice goose filet right here that is gonna go on the hot butter. That's just nothing but salt and pepper. Here we go. Tickle it, tickle it. Oh. So we're gonna try one that's just salt and pepper, which is the way you normally cook it. And I got a little recipe brewing up right here. It's my secret recipe. We're gonna sell this one day, so I can't quite tell you. No. <laughs> now duck and geese, you wanna eat pretty much rare to medium rare in the middle. I could have put some oil in there to get a nice sear and then baste it in butter, but we're trying to cook things faster. I'm hungry right now. I'm not trying to wait forever. Grab a little bit more butter, turn down the heat. Now we're gonna let that sit and cool for a little while. All right, we got our little marinade here. I'm gonna grab out one of our goose breasts straight over into the butter. And then we've got some spoonies, some spoonbill duck. These are gonna cook extremely fast though, because I'm all of them thin. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we got our spoonbills right here. These little thin ones, I cut them very, I malleted them almost flat. And uh, these cook extremely fast. We've been on maybe a minute or two. You don't want to overcook them. There it is. All the duck. Looks delicious. All right. We are ready. <laughs> Gigi's wearing his Halloween costume. Left or not. <laughs> Thought I released my inner cowboy. 15 days after watching Yellowstone. Yep. <laughs> We're going to see if it's cooked right or if it's raw. He's that a looks... ripper stick. <laughs> This is the first goose I ever shot. Uh, we're gonna give it a good taste. Looks like medium rare in the middle. It's just nothing but salt, pepper, and butter. It's good, it's good. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. I he was like quick, it. he was quick to the game. A little bit chewy, a little bit of ducky. Yeah, it's good. No, that's good. It's just good flavor, it always has the mm -hmm. recipes. All right, now this is Spoonbill. I mounted it flat. I'm gonna check, make sure it's done. Mm -hmm. Looks like it was overcooked just a little bit, but this the thin meats cook through very fast. Spoonbill and a marinade. It didn't marinate long, it marinated probably five, ten minutes. Well, that was a lot better than the goose. That one's really good. It's soft. Mm hmm Yeah, the flavor really goes in the middle of it too. How long did you marinate that? About five, ten minutes. Dang. The food's did over here. It? What's going on here? The food's over here. Is that a rip? That yep. deck's good. <laughs> 
All right, Jude, there you go. tell you to Deuce. quit binge watching Yellowstone. Still, you can't. You can't escape the taste test. Let's well, cool. me a little slice real quick. Hey, yeah, try all three. How do you walk oh. in and then just leave without Oh, well, I thought they were doing that. We got the expert taste tester right here. <laughs> All right, go ahead right there. Wow. There you go. So that's that's salt and pepper that good. juice. It's good. Yeah, that was really good. Salt right. and pepper. That yeah. Up. So that's a uh, marin uh, that's marinated spoonbill. What do you want? Cut it in half. A little bit chewy, huh? But it's good. Try it one more time. <laughs> Flash forward. <laughs> He's gonna try it one more time too. That's good. All right, so is He's that, still that's, chewing on it. <laughs> it's a little bit. It's just a little bit chewy. Right. He must have been at ten dinner. I don't know what PC it was. Well, no, Max, well, yeah, yeah probably. Chewy. He likes to save your. Yeah. Like Choose every little flavor. 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 <laughs> All right, next piece. Cheers. What the? <laughs> that's I one like the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper more. She's so this is goose. This is goose <laughs> marinade. Yeah, I like the salt and pepper. I think that's cool. I ate too much. Think that, good, I think that's AK for he didn't like. No, it was good, really good. No, nah, we've been eating. Yeah, it's good though. We we already ate dinner and everything, and I just had to get it cooked out and I get a good taste test. We're still gonna eat it all though. We got plenty of rice and stuff left over. Overall, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. I think my favorite had to be the duck just because of how much. Uh, the flavor goes through all of it. So the duck, I just mounted it like flat, real flat, tenderized it with a hammer, and then we seasoned it and then cooked it. That's why you like that one the most probably. It makes it tender and stuff. But overall, really good experience. Duck's good. The biggest thing is just don't overcook it. You overcook it, it's not going to be very good. You're not going to have a pleasant experience. Absolutely amazing eating. The family just ate a ton of it, and it is great eating to be honest. So um, we're going to go through some of the, the hunting process of this amazing meat. Now hunters get a bad rep a lot of times because people think we're just out there shooting stuff, you know, recklessly and going out and doing everything. It's part of conservation and we do enjoy the meals that those animals provide. They do not go to waste by any means and uh, our family really enjoys wild game. So as you can see here, our dinner plate's full. We're gonna be enjoying it tonight. So I hope you guys enjoy the hunting. Let's get in it. Yeah. <laughs> 
cold out here, but we just jumped up our first set of ducks. There's then is a bunch of spoonbills. Yeah, strike spoonie. We have officially found our target species, the snow geese. We just found a massive flock of them, and uh, we're gonna figure out if we can make a game plan to get some. We need to find a way to get them up in the air yeah. and towards you guys. So I don't know. There they are right there. Mixing them up. Oh, we did one drop, two drop. <laughs> yes, they dropped two. That's awesome. I got two. They're wide over me. We both dropped them. I don't know where the other ones are. Snow goose right there. That's cool. Been waiting for one of those. Yep. Been a long time. It's one of the bigger ones I've seen this year. All right, so we are done with our hunt. So we have Allie cleaning the ducks right now. We have her twin sister, Britt, which I never knew they were twins until today. So how long have you been duck hunting? Uh, more recently, like three years, but pretty much our entire life. Britt has a son who's a fan of Sin City Outdoors now, right? Yes, he is. What's his name? Cohen. Cohen. That's awesome. We'll have to send him a hat or something. <laughs> oh, he would love that. But we went out for the hunt. We left pretty early. Um, we managed to make it happen. They took us to their spot, their secret spot, and we were able to get two geese and seven ducks within a few hours. Yeah. It was about five hours. Within two hours? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, travel, travel time yeah. included. <laughs> yeah. Only three shells. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. All seven with one shell. We're going to cook one or two up tonight. One goose and one duck probably. So do you like the taste of the goose? It's better than duck in my opinion, but hopefully we can find a better way to make the duck. Grind it up with pork. Yeah, and make meatballs. Or do duck nachos. Those are the two ways that we've heard to try it that are the best. All right, Allie, appreciate you. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> she hates being on camera. <laughs>